you're talking about winning the middle, you have to say, yeah, if you're on that side, it's not okay. It's not normal. It's not, hey, 50 50, should we hate the gays or should we not hate the gays? No, if you hate people for who they are, you're a bit of a monster. I know you got turned into a monster by right wing media and propaganda and, and let's be honest, religion, etc. Okay, but people don't like honesty. So we're stuck, we're stuck. I don't think But in terms of the stuck. middle, no, I don't want you to think, as every stupid Democrat has done my entire life, it could be, could be, maybe you should hate black people and Latinos and immigrants and gays and all these people. I don't want to offend Republican voters. I don't want to offend them. Okay, so I, I gotta be a warrior for that. And Anna, you're a warrior for that, and you're an awesome warrior for that. I know, I but direct my ire toward those in power, Jenk. Because I believe, look, I mean, like, look at Florida as a perfect example. They elected Obama twice, 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 twice. Look at look at Florida now, right? Obviously, people can be persuaded and you give up too easily. Like you just do. We have policy ideas that are appealing across the aisle, period, period, period. But all of the focus by the mainstream Democratic Party is because they're paid by their donors and they don't actually want to push for the economic policies that would be popular. They they dive into the culture wars too, right? Yeah. So it's like this endless, like you're bad, no, you're bad, you're a terrible person, you're a terrible person. I'm not saying you don't fight the right wing power players, you absolutely do. But if we are to have anyone outside of our political group be receptive to the popular policy ideas that we have, we can't persuade them by immediately attacking them and writing them off as all bad people. You guys are all bad people, you guys all love crime, you all love this, you all love that. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I disagree with your theory of change. The whole thing about winning over the middle, that is what elections have been about for decades. For decades. No, no, but they have a false middle. Their middle is, oh, uh, bipartisan compromise that we should give billions more to corporations, and that's the middle of the country. That ain't the middle of the country. The middle of the country is an average guy, an average woman working their ass off, exactly. barely making it, exactly. etc. Right? So we address, I address the actual middle as opposed to the Democratic Party. Look, here's my solution, and this is what I've been doing to the best of my ability, and often very wrongly, I'm sure. Right? But I play both defense and offense. So if you're going to attack people, we're going to defend them. Period. Okay, at the same time, and this is what none of the rest of the Democratic Party do. Bernie does it a little bit, Justice Democrats do it a tiny bit, but yeah, but but a Democrats tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Okay. okay, what you have to do is play offense on economic issues. Yes. Do you want higher wages or do you want the Republican plan of lower wages? Do you want health care or don't you want health care? For God's sake, this is the one thing Anna and I agree most on. Play offense on economic issues. And look, right wing, let me just say this. I don't mind if you hate me, and I and I I'm gonna fight you, and you're gonna fight me, okay? On these culture war issues, it probably lasts the rest of our lifetime, okay? But can we just agree on things that are not culture war issues? Don't you want higher wages in healthcare? And I know some of you say no, not if it means working with a lib. And by the way, some of us say not if it means working with a bigot, a racist, a homophobe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So both sides fight the culture wars either now or later. But you have to fight together, together on economic issues where the people at the top, the donors, are crushing the living crap out of both of us. Let's stop the robbery first, and then we can go back to fighting. How do you get people to work together when the beginning of that proposal is we hate you guys, we think you're stupid, we think you love They criminals. hate us, you think they don't no, hate they us? No, they do hate us, they do yeah, hate us. Yeah, so what I'm but saying is it's okay, hate us, we hate you, but okay. let's work together so, so we don't get robbed. The right. guy's walking away with the freaking money, let's stop the robbery first. So it's just an honest way of dealing with it. Instead of saying like, oh my God, maybe you guys are right about X, Y, or Z. No, I no. never said that, Jake. I, I know, never I know. what the, the, the straw. Man, okay, that is a straw man. That for is you. A, no, you love straw manning. You love it. I'm trying to be as fair as possible during this conversation. You're intentionally misrepresenting what I'm saying here. Obviously, I don't agree with the hateful rhetoric. I don't like any of it. Okay, but there, it's really interesting to me that when you had a candidate like Obama who ran on hope and change, who ran on economic issues, all of these people who are now enamored with Donald Trump actually voted for Obama. Gee, I wonder why that is. Could it be that in lieu of a candidate that actually represents their economic interests, they just go for the cult of personality who owns the libs? That is what happens. That is our political landscape right now. So we can continue attacking ordinary people that we disagree with. And to be sure, I do disagree with them. But we have to also, more importantly, if you ask me, Focus on the systems that has created this mess in the first place. And sometimes I feel like 
the focus isn't where it needs to be.